Hello and welcome back to Grafted Branch Ministry. As always, I'm Scotty Erb, and today's study we're going to be looking at hypocrisy, particularly hypocrisy in leadership. How even in the Old Testament to the time of Jesus, after Jesus rose again, all the way up to today, how leadership, those in power, they are just pure hypocrites. They say one thing, mean another, and within their actions, they knowingly do what they know is wrong. Or they may not know or understand that it's wrong, but they see for them to keep their position of power, they do it anyways. Um, there was a, well, not just a, but a new, numerous, numerous different events in um, media recently that, well, it lays this out clear as day for us and we see how it's not only just one side I mean face the facts if you're a Republican or a Democrat it's on both sides of the aisle more so on one side um, I point out just because of what it is that they're fighting for what it is that they get upset about um, the other day in the news a gentleman that was been being interviewed by uh, the showcase he said well I use this acronym of sin they shift the narrative ignore the facts and name call and that's what we see in today's politics so much is one side if they're not getting their way instead of acknowledging the facts and saying okay we need to address this issue they dismiss it and then they start yelling out bigotry or racist you don't know what you're talking about because you're such a racist minded person is that true or in themselves saying that are they letting known their hypocrisy they say they claim to do right by the people, but are they truly attempting to do right? We'll start in Isaiah chapter 5, and we'll look at an example in the Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, and then we'll wrap it up with why it is that we can trust Scripture and what Scripture is saying and why Scripture is even to be validated today being as old as it is. Now in Isaiah chapter 5, verse, tw verse 20, it states, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and, and prudent in their own sight. There's this whole thing of a Green New Deal um, where they're trying to take everyone off of fossil fuels. They're even talking about getting rid of the flatulent cows because they're an endangerment to society. And how, well, I guarantee you the same people that go along with that, they're jumping on their private jet or they're taking a plane flight somewhere or they're driving their big SUV along back home, down the highway, putting all these emissions into the air. Hypocrisy at work. And replacing good for uh, evil and evil for good. You look no further than um, abortion. Now, it's a despicable thing and they say, oh no, it's not murder, it's just a fetus. It's not a person yet it's not a baby yet well in the word of god it says life of the flesh is in the blood and <laughs> my dog is coming up to say hi wants to get famous i guess but um anyways it says life of the flesh is in the blood and from the moment of conception blood forms 
in the uterus, which creates the life of the baby. Go lay down, Mimsy. Go on, go on, go lay down. Um, getting back on topic here, we'll move along and we'll look at Matthew. When Jesus was calling out the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, Matthew chapter 23 states, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, These scribes and these Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, therefore, whatsoever they bid, you observe, and observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So basically Jesus is pointing out, hey, these guys that are in the position of power, they're in the high seat, they're dictating what should be done for the Jews. Um, Jews at the time didn't have a king. They were under uh, the rule of the Roman Empire. But they still had their religion. So the Sadducees and the Pharisees were basically the leaders of what um, what their their society outside of Roman rulers they went to for guidance, and they were saying to do certain things, but they themselves were not doing them. Verse four: For they bid heavy burdens, lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their proselytes and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues. So basically it was all for a motive of power. It was all to be noticed of the people. You always hear something different when a political figure, rather on the Democratic or the Republican side, primarily on the left, all right, that's the right for you guys, but my left hand, so whichever or, <laughs> they say one thing and just a few hours later they change it. Or you have the instance of the sexual assault allegations against Brett Kavanaugh a few months ago, and they were saying that all women in these circumstances should be believed. And then you have Fairfax, a government, uh, possible government governor replacement in uh, West Virginia, He's under a sex sexual allegations that were ignored, and now they're stating they don't even want to talk about the subject. <clears throat> Just bringing into focus some of the hypocrisy that's been going on lately. But yet these people crave the uppermost rooms. They like the attention. They like the cameras to be on them. They like the focus. Moving later on into chapter 23 in Matthew, in verse 13, we look at, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, a pretense, make long prayers, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than you. You got some people at this time trying to live and do right by God. They recognize the scripture. They know what the scripture said and they see Jesus' actions. But yet these Pharisees and Sadducees are trying to redirect 
they're shifting the point of focus for the people from that to back to these routines and these systems rather than pointing out yes this is what we've been waiting for this is our messiah this is god in the flesh here with us they shift the narrative they change direction they ignore the facts and then they name call and they slanderize and then those that they are getting under their rule they are misleading and bringing them into hell and damnation themselves skipping along again verse 23 we read woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the waiter matter of the law judgment mercy and faith the these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone ye blind guides which strain the gnat and swallow the camel here Jesus is pointing out to the Sadducees and the Pharisees that they go after the big picture to be noticed they're going after trying to press the ties for the cumins the an anias um, the tithe of mint um, they're they're pushing for this big picture that can be noticed rather than the little thing that they should be doing daily the simpler thing that actually draws them closer to God verse 25 we continue woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extort extortation ex exhortation excuse me and excess thou blind Pharisee cleans cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outer outside of them may be clean also just like I was saying they themselves are not clean but they're offering up these things that look pretty on the outside but yet they themselves that are making the offer outward are not clean so therefore is the offer any good or is it just a show just as you see this deal with the green new deal being displayed by a couple of the new democrats they uh, want to paint the picture of this glorified new way of government and <laughs> they ignore the illegitimate illegitimate fact that it's impossible what they're offering but the thing is is that it sounds so good to draw the eye it's basically what they call on the internet now to get people to uh, give it more attention clickbait they paint this picture they offer up this green new deal with these outlining facts that they want to push in it just to get people to pay more attention to them they're making pretty the outside of the vessel verse 27 woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto whited sepulchers which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all unclean uncleanliness uncleanness even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity as i've been saying we look at what's going on here in the days of Jesus and then we see what happened before Jesus we see what happened after Jesus and we see what's going on today in today's society it's all two and the same there's different uh, directives of, of approach that they take because here 
people actually respected the Word of God more at this time than they do today. Even the Christians today, sadly, they fall aside or they, they're okay with brushing apart what they know in the Word of God so that they themselves are more accepted within, a, within society. I've caught myself being guilty of this at times. Um, and it discourages me from speaking out. Once I realized that I, I made the wrong move or I didn't speak up when I could have spoke up, I'm sure many of you feel the same at times. But we know under the gospel of salvation that we are all forgiven. All sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. It was a one sin, sinless substitute for all that gives us eternal salvation, eternal security. Getting ahead of myself, I'm going to get to that topic later on. Turn back to Isaiah chapter 14 with me. And in chapter 14, verse 12, we read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit upon, or I will sit also upon the mount of of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Okay, we'll stop right there for a second. This is Satan when he was kicked out of heaven and the reason why he was kicked out. The reason why God sent him down to the earth. Doesn't this drastic depiction of what Satan wanted to do. He wanted to put himself on the most high, di dictate exactly what we've been going over thus far. Now we see what happens to him for his desire for this in verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? It's always easy to look at somebody after they've been uh, vilified or uh, determined to be a bad man. Um, Recently, we have uh, Roger Stone that got indicted, and there was this massive raid on his house. A bit excessive. I'm not a fan of Roger Stone. I um, am hesitant to say that he is a born-again believer. But the thing of it is, is how he was approached. Um, they tried to vilify him so that the masses were turned against them. We see a similar instance here in Acts. And in Acts chapter 5, there's Peter preaching, him and the other apostles. And we fast forward all the way up to verse 17. Okay. While they're preaching, they start doing miracles and healing people. God had given them the, the power of healing for His greatness, His glorification, not man's. And in verse 17, the priests get a little upset. And let's see what they do. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. So these priests and these Sadducees, they were filled with indignation. They were ticked off that Peter was out there preaching, that these apostles were out there preaching in Jesus' name. Verse 18, And laid their hands upon him, upon 
<laughs> excuse me, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So they laid their hands, they, they grabbed them and pulled them aside and put them in the prison cell. Okay, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, but, but the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the, the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told. Okay, so right here, they were going to bring them out and make a show of them. But the angel of the Lord let them out. The angel of the Lord wanted them to not be displayed in this way. They didn't want the people to have a different image of them. By doing so, okay, skipping ahead, verse 25, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. Okay, so the officers and the captain, they didn't want to do as they did before and lay hands on them. They probably went and said, hey, can you, can you just come with us? We need to talk to you. Get, come on, come on. Okay, so continuing on, verse 27, And when they had brought them, they set them before the council of all the priests, the high priests and the Sadducees. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name, the name of Jesus? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with, the do with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us, the blood that was shed of Jesus. Trying to place that burden upon them. Uh, kind of a little play on words. Place that man's blood upon them. It's through the blood that we have the remission of sins. <clears throat> Verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Now I ask you, should you obey God rather than man? Should you obey the words of God rather than man? Um, look at Isaiah 59. Again, comparing New Testament with Old Testament and then keeping in mind what's going on today in our society. And we look at verse 4. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, and speak lies, they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Weaving webs, planting eggs, um, planting seeds of thought, those that eat it up. They're then <laughs> crushed. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the acts of violence in their hands. Their, their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. They, the way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Okay, so those that are falling for the deception of the leadership rather than listening to God. Should we obey God rather than man? Those that obey God, 
they know not peace. They lack um, guidance. They lack uh, any sense of morality, yet they make their own morality out of their own precepts, their own understanding through their own sight, and are then misled. <clears throat> now, all these things, they come into play and Well, looking at what we know to this point, what is it that uh, verifies that these things are true? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, into, into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God tells every man that they are wrong. The word of God does not It does not always comfort. Rather, it puts us in a discomfort with the way that we live our lives or we had lived our lives once before. We have the comfort of knowing that we have eternal salvation. We have the comfort of knowing that we have a Savior that is not going to forget us and is going to rapture us out of this life. Please, even so, Lord, come. We have the hope of salvation and knowing that we are not point appointed unto wrath and destruction. But those that are in unbelief, it's a different story. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, it states, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place unto the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Speaking of scripture, speaking of the word of God, speaking of your Bible, the, the King James authorized version. Knowing this, verse 20, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. With all that said, and all that stated, this is our moral authority above all else. And what is it to be saved? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And he, rose, he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So important to understand how that Christ died. As we read before in Acts, they were afraid to have that man's blood put upon them. Because if they would admit to it, then they would admit that they were wrong in dismissing and objecting to Jesus when he was here. Um, just as leadership today, they often want to vilify the other side. They shift the attention, they ignore the facts, and then they name call. They're sinning. It's a sin in its truest form. And people that are under sin often do the same thing. Well, I hope this message was a blessing. I hope you can see the hypocrisy that is in the world and also realize the truth that is in the Bible and that it should be... Um, looked at as 
the moral compass, both then and now. God is never changing, but man is ever changing. With that, I salute you. Godspeed. Until next time.